Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we are going to be going over wound maceration. But first, if you could hit that like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel grow. So what is skin maceration? So maceration occurs when skin is in contact with moisture for too long. So macerated skin, it looks lighter in color, is wrinkly, um, it feels soft, wet, soggy. You probably have noticed this if you've been in the bath or a pool too long, your skin gets really wrinkly. Now, if we have a wound involved and we have this maceration around a wound, it is not good, okay? So maceration can slow the healing process and makes the skin more vulnerable to infection. Now, it can also, if we don't correct this right away, it can also allow a wound to get larger, okay? So skin maceration is associated with improper moisture balance of the wound, okay? So we need to make sure that the moisture balance of a wound is just right. We want a just moist wound, okay? So what causes this maceration? So skin regularly comes in contact with different sources of moisture, whether it be water, sweat. Now during the process of wound healing, pus and other discharge fluids come out of the wound, okay? Now they will, so they will kind of accumulate around the wound um, and just kind of sit there if they're not wicked away properly. Um, and like I said before, you've probably experienced this in a bathtub um, or even when you wear a bandage and you wash your hands with the bandage on and later you have that ring of whiteness, that's maceration. Now, most of the time, this goes away quickly um, once it has a chance to dry out. Now, however, with chronic wounds, if the moisture is left there, say we're changing the dressing every two, three days, and it's a 24 hour time frame that that moisture is just sitting on that skin oversaturated, it's going to be very difficult for that tissue to dry out once it's been saturated for so long, okay? So we have to make sure we're using the correct cover dressings to wick away that moisture. Um, So a little background on wounds. So when we have an injury, automatically an immune response happens. Now, um, the part of this response involves a chemical called histamine. Now this allows the release of a fluid called plasma. As plasma and other fluids accumulate, the skin around the wound swells. So wounds need to be cleaned and dried and dressed to prevent these complications. Um, now, when a wound is infected, fluid production increases, okay? So this makes maceration even more likely to occur, okay? So we always have to be assessing a wound, assessing our markers, see if there's infection, um, because if infection is starting, we know that maceration, it's going to happen. Fluid production, it's going to increase. So we need to immediately recognize this and put on a thicker bandage. Um, now, chronic wounds are more vulnerable to maceration. So these include bed sores, venous leg ulcers, diabetic ulcers, and third degree burns. Okay, so those chronic wounds, those are at higher risk um, because they are open for much longer, higher risk of infection. Now, maceration doesn't always happen just around a wound. That's why I've added this little section in here. Because we can have skin maceration that causes wounds, okay? So if we're not taking care of skin maceration, it can cause a wound. So poor hygiene can increase the risk of skin maceration especially in those who have incontinence or are staying in bed for long periods of time due to different conditions. So prolonged contact to urine soaked clothing, incontinence pads, bed sheets can lead to maceration, incontinence, dermatitis, um, adult ripe, uh, diaper rash, 
bacterial, fungal infections, wet areas in between our folds of skin can also cause maceration, causing um, little skin tears, skin to open, wounds. Now, although you don't have to have poor hygiene, these are just some examples. Um, now, some simple things that we don't even think of all the time can also cause maceration. So if we're not drying in between our toes, um, moisturizing too much before we're putting on socks, all these things can cause mild maceration. Now in a patient with diabetes, if we're moisturizing in between the toes, I mean, we can cause big issues for these people. So we have to be super, super cautious what we're doing. Um, diabetes definitely, um, we got to be, we got to be careful with maceration because we can over time get these large wounds. So how is skin maceration treated? Okay, so mild cases, normally just exposing the area to air will reverse it. Okay, however, if it's more severe, we will have to treat it. So treatment for macerated skin um, <clears throat> by the wounds can be specifically treated with bandages or different dressings. Now, even um, like I just spoke in the last slide, if it has to do with like incontinence, just changing more frequently, but for this case, around the wound, um, where is the moisture coming from? So is it coming out of the wound itself or is it coming from an outside source, just from like showering, it getting wet, and then the dressing can't be changed for a few days because you're on a schedule of changing every two to three days. If that's the case, we just need to have an airtight, airtight seal, use an occlusive dressing, so we're making sure that it is not getting wet at all. Now, if the drainage is coming from the actual wound itself, then we need to use like a hydrofiber. Now this will help remove the liquid and reduce uh, the risk of the maceration, okay? So that's how we would treat this. So complications with maceration, we've kind of already touched base on this, but Healthy skin acts as a barrier to protect our internal organs um, and tissues from outside threats, okay? So macerated tissue is a weak barrier, okay? So it's more susceptible to bacterial and fungal infections in the healthy tissues, okay? Um, so it easily breaks down. Macerated skin around a wound can also increase healing time, increase oversize, increase risk of infection. Um, so it's just something that we really want to reduce the risk of, and if we see it, fix it right away. Um, now, if our uh, macerated skin is rubbing on like footwear or our clothing, it can create new wounds. Um, so it'll open up our skin barrier and then you're at risk for all these issues, okay? And that's definitely the main complications with say, um, if somebody is incontinence, having a lot of urinary issues, wearing a diaper, if they are staying wet for too long, all of these, they're at risk for all of these issues. So making sure that they're changed, making sure they're on a schedule um, for changing because we do not want these complications. All right, so that's all I have for this video. I hope you did find it helpful and now understand why macerated tissue, it's so important that we treat it immediately. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you in my next one. See you guys.